Um, that's going to bring us to a close this morning, but this is, in fact, just the beginning. Um, and, you know, in addition to thanking the panelists, the best way that we can thank the panelists um, is by re returning something in kind, excuse me, right, um, and giving back to them our own commitment to thinking, critiquing, experimenting, optimizing, and reflecting on generative AI in our own teaching and learning practice and beyond. So here at MIT, we'll continue to do that um, uh, uh, and following on uh, MIT Week of Generative AI um, and at MIT Open Learning will also support that. So all of the registered attendees um, can expect to receive a follow-up email um, if you registered for, for this week's event. That'll give you access to the recording of all of the week's events if you didn't attend all of them um, as soon as that's ready. Um, and for registrants from this event, you can also expect to receive an invitation to sign up um, for additional uh, events sponsored by Open Learning on this topic over the coming months. Uh, additional online and in-person talks, maybe some hands-on workshops. And for those of you on campus, please uh, mark your calendars for the MIT Festival of Learning, uh, which will take place on Wednesday, January 31st here on our campus. Um, and I'll just leave us, before I turn it over to our demos, uh, with one final comment um, about the two tasks that remain at hand. First, our task as learners, uh, which is to remain curious, right, um, and to remain human um, agents of curiosity, um, and to use tools, including this new one, um, to advance and explore our own learning and curiosity. Uh, second, our task as educators, um, uh, to meet students where they are, um, and to prepare them for the world that they will inherit. And those two tasks are ones that generative AI has not changed. That work will continue. Um, just before I turn it over to uh, the demos, a reminder for those of you who are participating in the full week's events, the next symposium um, on generative AI and health begins uh, first with a lunch and then with programming at 1.30 in Building 76 right nearby. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over um, to uh, the next six demos. Thank you. Hi, I'm David. I'm from the MIT App Inventor team. The App Inventor team is not just interested in what kids can do with generative AI, but rather we are more interested in what can they create with these tools. The question of what new future are they going to create with these new technologies? The App Inventor is making it possible so that anyone can create a mobile application that harnesses the power of generative AI. With just eight blocks, you can also create your own personal ELISA on the palm of your hands. But we can be a little bit more creative. Um, imagine a kid creating a mobile application where they list all the food ingredients they have in their refrigerator and then ask ChatGPT, what should I cook for dinner? And then ChatGPT comes back suggesting a uh, an ingredient, a, a dish that you should cook for dinner. Imagine a kid creating a mobile application where they can generate a new art based on the description of the dream they had last night. What would you want to create? Join us in the App Inventor demo. Hello, everyone. I'm Evan Patton. I'm also with the App Inventor team. I had a great one-minute pitch, and Hal stole my thunder. <laughs> uh, but please come and join us for an aptly demo. And if you ask really nicely, I may program it in Italian just to show that English might not necessarily be the programming language of the future, but your own native language might be the programming language of the future. Thank you. Hello, I am with uh, MIT Open Learning. I, we have uh, worked with an application to allow users to search open courseware content using natural language, search and explore the content. Right? Traditionally, as we know, the search has been text-based. You give the system a piece of text, it search all the documents and bring out relevant documents. The next phase for us was to look more into the system, understanding the meaning of the question. So you'd ask something to the system, the system would go and understand what the documents are, meaningfully, semantically related to the question you asked, would bring up those documents, would summarize in a nice way for the user to, to give the, the answer. Uh, it's sort of similar to, to what the large language model ChatGPT does with two main fundamental different uh, uh, approaches which addresses two of the main issues with large language models today. The first one is when the system answer we don't allow the system to take any other source other than open courseware source materials. That means that the system cannot hallucinate. And this is the first problem it solves with large language models. The second one is more of um, 
where uh, the system is, the large language models, they are considered black box. Right? You ask a question, you get a response, but you don't know where the response came from or the motivation behind it. By us, by doing a semantic search with these, all the documents are related to the user's question, it means that the, the, you, there is a transparent to the user where the answer came from. The motivation for us for this is the first one is very practical. We are trying to, to sort of build an infrastructure where the user can find uh, course materials, education materials at MIT. And the second one, and the first, we have a very good text-based search system. This is a complement to that text-based search system. And ideally, we'd like to work where we'll talk more about hybrid search systems, which is more popular now in the e-commerce world. Probably you'll hear more in tomorrow's sessions. And the, the, the other motivation is a bit more philosophical. How can we uh, use some of these uh, great features of uh, large language models without the high cost of fine-tuning or training a model from scratch? And these are some sort of uh, ideas that uh, it seems like there is a way to get those, uh, those features without the cost. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Hunter, uh, and I've been working with Professor Dirk England, who presented earlier um, on Chat Tutor, which we're calling the Expert TA for STEM courses. Um, if you come out and see the demo, what you'll see is a web page for a course like 6.101, which is the intro uh, MIT uh, programming course. Um, and in the bottom right, you'll see a chatbot. And what this chatbot does is it answers student questions, but very accurately, so with a very limited hallucination rate. The way that we've achieved this is by using not only retrieval augmented generation, but a separation of the answers to, uh, the, answers to like, the problem sets and other questions in a single context database and everything else in another uh, with some different leveling of uh, like GPTs that try to like, you know, uh, counter jailbreaking. Um, but this actually allows us to get a really low hallucination rate. Uh, we've also created a really automated way for professors to add this to their courses. So if anyone is interested in adding this to the course, we have um, a QR code out there that you can scan. Uh, so it, we even sign up for our wait list. Um, but something else that we're doing to drive the hallucination rate down even further, specifically for physics, CS, uh, math, and engineering courses, is actually taking textbooks uh, and lecture notes and converting them into a code interpretable format like a computer algebra system like SymPy. What this does is instead of just having retrieval augmented de generation uh, with text, you actually have it with code. Uh, and what this means is that with OpenAI's assistant API where you can now run code uh, in, uh, you know, like in GPT-4 for example, you can go and Clapping. Okay, uh, you can go and uh, run the code so that you can simulate things from first principles, so that you know that the, uh, that the answer that the student is asking for uh, isn't just some like next word prediction. It's actually like a truly interpretable, verifiable, like truth-based answer. Um, and if you're interested in that and working with us to create, uh, you know, a new generation of course material in this interpretable format, uh, you can also uh, sign up with the QR code. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Pat. I'm a student of Professor Patty Mars at the MIT Media Lab. Um, I don't know about you, but I don't want to learn from Chatbot. I want to learn from Dinosaur instead. I don't know how many of you want to learn from Dinosaur. <laughs> um, well, that actually motivates our research on trying to figure out what happens if we can create virtual character based on student interest that can be personalized and can you know, give lecture in a more interesting and, and kind of fun way. Um, but there are a lot of hype around this generative AI and personalization. So our work at the Media Lab is not just about building interesting future, but study them regularly with scientific method. So come to our work and you know, hear about how do we study this uh, personalized learning with generative AI and what's the impact on learning. Spoiler alert, it doesn't work on the all type of learning, but it can have profound impact on learning motivation. So come check out our work. Uh, thank you so much. Um, hello, everyone. I am also from uh, Patty's group at the MIT Media Lab. My name is Valdemar Danor. And, um, one thing that is going to be a huge problem and is already a huge problem as we go into the future is that there is so much information um, out there uh, on the internet and now with these generative models we're just generating tons of information um, and we're getting these walls of texts when we talk to chatbots. Um, you know when we have all of this knowledge available to us at an instant one of the biggest problems, I think, in education is going to be learning how to filter through the information in a reliable way and making sure that you don't just over-rely on these systems, but you actually become a better critical thinker. Um, and so that is uh, some of the work that uh, we've been doing at the lab. 
um, you know, how do we augment critical thinking? How do we change these systems so that we don't just trust them blindly what they're doing, but they actually help us develop uh, critical thinking skills and ways of reasoning about the information that they present to us. So we can become smarter instead of making, making smarter AI. Um, we can become smarter with AI. Uh, thank you. All right, and with that, um, we would like to call the, the, the morning to an end. Thank you all for staying with us and, um, and enjoy the demos and enjoy the rest of the week. Woo! <laughs>